Sulfur, a solid non-metallic pale yellow element, is found in great quantities along the coast of the Gulf of Mexico in Texas and Louisiana. The deposit, deep under the ground, is brought to the surface through wells like those drilled for oil. A battery of steam boilers, however, must be provided. The steam is forced underground, melting the sulfur so that it can easily be brought to the surface in a liquid state. The melted sulfur is pumped into vats, where the cooling process starts. You see it here pouring direct from the wells. In this stage, it strikingly resembles crude petroleum. As it cools, it becomes thicker and is pumped from the receiving vats into big wooden tanks, much like the forms into which raw cement is poured. Elevated walks are provided to permit workmen to cross from the wells to the storage vats. It takes about six months for the sulfur to harden enough to permit the removal of the wooden sides of the temporary vats. This framework is removed when the sulfur becomes hard and brittle. Once dried, the sulfur becomes so solid that it has to be broken up before being handled for shipment. These workmen are drilling it and tamping in a load of dynamite, just as you might see them do in the face of a stone quarry. The pile of sulfur here represents the product of about six months from the wells. Tons of dynamite are used in this shot, which crumples up the face of the sulfur mountain and smashes it into small bits, small enough to be loaded into cars. The blast usually sets fire to the powdered sulfur, but it is easily extinguished without doing great damage. And now, the sulfur, having been loosened by the blast, is attacked by steam shovels and loaded in cars to be taken away to be used in various ways in manufacture. Sulfur is largely used in the manufacture of pulp for newsprint paper, for vulcanizing rubber and other processes in rubber manufacture, in medicines, in the refining of petroleum, in the making of steel, and in gunpowder. One of its compounds, sulfuric acid, is extensively used in a number of manufacturing processes. The sulfur wells, however, are only one of the many sources of supply of sulfur. It is sometimes found in a free state in mine. This is a piece of native sulfur, such as is found frequently in volcanic regions. It occurs often in irregular masses, but sometimes exhibiting distinct crystals of the form known as rhombic octahedra, that is, having eight distinct faces. For commercial purposes, sulfur is often cast in molds appearing as brittle sticks known as roll sulfur. It is also used in a powdered form called flowers of sulfur. Sulfur is almost insoluble in water. When sulfur rolls are added to water, a litmus paper test will record no change. When flowers of sulfur are added to water, the litmus paper indicates a strong acid reaction. This is found to be due to impurities caused by oxidation. Milk of sulfur is used as a medicine. It is made by precipitating sulfur from one of its compounds by adding hydrochloric acid. It gets its name from its milky appearance. The behavior of sulfur when heated is of great interest to the chemist, as its form can thus be varied. It first melts into a pale yellow liquid which, if poured into water, becomes a brittle mass. If, when melted, it is allowed to solidify slowly and the crust is pierced and the remaining liquid poured off, the sulfur is found to be in an entirely different form having long needle-like crystals and is called prismatic or monoclinic sulfur. As the hardened sulfur is here broken, you will see an excellent example of this needle-like crystalline structure, which is characteristic of the form variations through which this element can be changed. If the heating is continued, the sulfur thickens somewhat, 
and then pour it into water, here is the result. Fantastic masses not unlike Chinese artwork. At higher temperatures, the sulfur becomes very dark and viscous. Poured into water, it retains its sticky quality. This form is known as plastic sulfur. In charcoal, sulfur forms gunpowder. If merely mixed, then ignited, combustion is considerable residue. However, if the mixture is moist powder, the ignition is much quicker and there is no ash. Let us now take lime made from oyster shells and mix it with sulfur. We break it open, we find the combustion has taken place. The residue is a white powder. If this powder is ground into a paint, it seems to leave no mark when first applied. But if exposed to light, becomes luminous and clearly visible. Here is a curious compound of sulfur and carbon, carbon bisulfide. It is an evil smelling liquid which burns with a pale, nearly smokeless flame. This liquid freely dissolves sulfur. In air, sulfur burns with a blue flame. But when oxygen is added from a jet, the sulfur bursts into a brilliant flame as you see here. Chlorate liberates oxygen freely and sulfur mixed with chlorate burns violently and freely. Graphic hypo is a complex salt of sulfur sodium theosulfate. One of its chief characteristics is the power to dissolve silver bromide. Hypo is also used to remove stains made by iodine. This makes it very useful in surgical work. Sulfur combines with hydrogen to form an evil smelling gas called sulfuretted hydrogen or hydrogen sulfide. It can be made by placing iron sulfide in a Wolf's bottle and adding hydrochloric acid. Here you can see the gas bubbling up from the iron sulfide. This gas is present in city air due to pyrites, combination of iron and sulfur, found in coal. This gas blackens picture. Here we show you its action on a painted surface containing lead. Sulfuric acid is known. Sulfuric acid 